Hi, uh, this is Xin Hao. I'd like to talk about locality of uh, natural forest composition and star forest decomposition. Um, we consider the standard local model, and uh, the problem uh, we're going to consider is the forest decomposition problem. In the K forest decomposition problem, we're going to partition the edges into K partitions such that each partition induces a forest. And this is an example of a three forest decomposition. And the forest decomposition problem has applications in uh, scheduling of a wireless network, and it's also a building block for many uh, distributed and power algorithms. And it's insightful to compare the forest decomposition with the traditional edge coloring problem, where in the traditional edge coloring problem, we want each partition to be a matching. And in the forest decomposition problem, we want each partition to be a forest. And uh, these are the two uh, common goals of these problems, which is to minimize the number of colors and also to minimize the number of rounds to obtain such a structure. And the main question we are going to ask is, to, is how close to an optimal number of colors we can get with efficient uh, distributed algorithms. And by efficient, we mean polylogan or polylogan times polylog delta, uh, uh, times poly delta. Yeah. Um, so for the edge coloring problem, the optimal number of colors we can get in general is delta plus one by Biden's theorem. And uh, uh, for the forest competition, the optimal number of color we can get is A, where A is R versus T. And uh, this is this follows by a classical grid of uh, Nash Williams. So here are the previous results for edge coloring. So for two delta minus one, edge coloring, it can be obtained by a uh, reduction to uh, delta plus one vertex coloring by considering the line graph. And uh, Pytonasi and Sirvasan started a line of randomized distributed algorithm that can is capable to obtain colors less than uh, two delta minus one. And they accumulated in the work of John Po, which can get delta plus uh, all of delta colors by uh, this algorithm here with this number of rounds. Um, and the Gafari further pushes down the range to delta plus the point again. And the reason is when we get an algorithm that uh, achieves close to the optimal number of colors with this number of rounds. And uh, finally, uh, last year, uh, Benchton gave an algorithm, algorithm that can uh, achieve the optimal number of colors. And uh, to get delta plus one colors, the algorithm will take poly delta log and rounds. Because in this case, uh, epsilon will be one over delta. So that's what happened for H color. But for, uh, so these are the results for forest composition. Uh, Byron and Elkin have this uh, well known H partition algorithm for uh, forest composition, which can get the number of uh, forests or colors to 2A. And uh, uh, Gafari and Su uh, push this below 2A by giving an algorithm that can achieve A plus square root A log n colors. So this is the current status of the problem. And uh, in this work, we further pushed down the color to this bound here uh, with the similar number of uh, rounds, probably one of some log n. And uh, moreover, we show that it can be further pushed down to A plus three. And with uh, this algorithm here with uh, running Hampoy delta one over epsilon log n. So we will be able to get, for example, A plus three forest decomposition in poly delta log n rounds. Because in this case, epsilon will be one over A, and this is going to be, uh, so one over epsilon is going to be less than delta. Okay. So this basically summarizes our main result, but we also consider some additional variants. For example, the forest diameter. Um, so the forest di diameter is the diameter of trees in the forest decomposition. And the special case is when the diameter is two, where we call it a star forest decomposition. And uh, also consider a least color variant of forest decomposition problem, uh, where in the K of FD problem, every edge is given a palette of size K. And uh, Seymour showed that uh, A of the always exists. So um, we consider the combinations of these, uh, these objectives. And uh, here, the comprehensive uh, picture of our, our, our result. And uh, the 
one that are of particular interest are the last two rows for which are the star forest composition problem. Uh, our algorithm can get uh, a plus square root of the delta plus log a star forest composition. And uh, this actually improves the previously best known uh, existential bound by along that O. And uh, the result is also tied in the sense that the dependency on delta cannot be improved and the dependency on A cannot be improved either. Okay. So that basically summarizes our result. And uh, now we want to talk a, a little bit more about the technical summary of uh, our results. So our results follow from two separate approaches. So approach two, uh, uh, the bound that marks in green here is for star forest competition and then it follows a, a, a more elaborate argument of uh, Gaffari and Su. But today we are gonna focus on, on approach one. Uh, because the technique there might be more interesting to the distributed community. So what's approach one here? Uh, it's uh, local argumentation by network decomposition. And the method is also inspired by uh, the proof of S local versus local of the GAFRV at all's work. And uh, we also show in the paper this technique can be applied to other problems such as uh, one plus epsilon A, uh, low LD reorientation uh, problem. So how does this method work? Um, so let's assume we can do local augmentation. What is local augmentation? It's a case that say now we have a partial coloring of the edges and uh, given an uncolored HD, we say it can be locally augmented if we can uh, color it with some color and possibly some uh, change the color of some of the nearby edges so that the forest property is not violated. And uh, it's not guaranteed this can be done, but let's assume this can be done and see how we can combine it with the network decomposition. Uh, so here's the definition of network decomposition. Uh, a D kind network decomposition is a partition of the vertices into chi classes. And uh, the diameter of each connected component in each class is upper bounded by D. And uh, it is known that log n, log n network decomposition can be compared, computed in all of log n square rounds. So a very useful technique is to compute a log n, log n network decomposition in uh, the power graph of K, uh, power graph of G. And if you do that, uh, two components of the same class will be at least K halves away, right? They will be quite far away, but the diameter of each component can still bar, uh, bound it by uh, K times log n, which is good. And uh, so what we do is that we compute such a network decomposition. And uh, then if we consider the component of a particular class, uh, the components will be far away. And, um, and uh, the blue area here are the, um, the possible edges that can be have a color, their color change doing the local augmentation. And because these components are far away, so they will be able to do local augmentations on all of the edges one by one locally without uh, interfering other components. And so um, each component will be able to color the edges inside the component independently. And that's for one uh, color class. And then we can iterate through all the color classes one by one to color all the edges. So this is how this method work. However, um, there are some technical challenges we still have to deal with. The first is that we want to show that uh, this local argumentation exists and uh, it's unclear whether they exist or not. So our country, first contribution is to show that, to give a structural result showing this uh, argumentation will exist. However, there's a caveat. Although they exist, it doesn't mean that you can find it. Um, so, so this poses another technical challenge. So we also develop a procedure uh, to deal with it. The procedure is for cutting the dependency to make the algorithm local, as we'll see pretty soon. Uh, but before that, we'll have to see how the argumentation worked uh, in practice for this problem. So here's how the argumentation works. So let's say we have a partial color in here and the E1 is an uncolored edge. So if we 
Uh, so this will be an argumenting sequence. So how does this work? Say we want to color E1 in red, then what happens is that um, we will, will create it a cycle, a red cycle view. So we have to pick an edge on a cycle and color it with some other color, say blue. And then now new, a new cycle is created. So we do the same thing, pick an edge and color it in other color. And then now there's, again, new cycle is created and then we pick an edge on the cycle and try to color it in other color. And then now no new cycle is created and we are done. And so this is this sequence here is known as an argumenting sequence. Once you find a such a sequence, you will be able to uh, uh, add, uh, you will be able to increase one more color edge, right? By argument upon it. So this is just a formal definition of such an uh, argumenting sequence. Note that EI plus one and EI doesn't have to be consecutive. Uh, so CEI, CI means the cycle created by color EI is color CI. And so, so they don't have to be consecutive. Okay, so this is the definition of argument, uh, argumenting sequence. But now the question is whether an argumenting sequence always exists. And the double and western men show that okay, uh, if there are a colors, then it always exists. And so we can color the edges one by one by using this uh, argumentation procedure. But here, what we care is whether they, the argumenting sequence lies in the local neighborhood of E1. And uh, what we have shown is that uh, we show that for any epsilon greater than zero, if we have a one plus epsilon a colors, then there always exists an argumenting sequence whose edges lies in the local neighborhood, local and over epsilon neighborhood of E1. Uh, so this is what we have shown in our structural theory. But that doesn't imply we can get an efficient algorithm. Why is that? Because here's the caveat. Um, so although the, in this case here, although the argumenting sequence lies in the local neighborhood of E1, it doesn't mean that we can find it. Because in this case, say we want to uh, color E3 in green, then it will create a cycle that might be very long and then the cycle might go out of the local neighborhood of E1. So in this case, we can't even uh, verify that E4 is in a, a cycle uh, created by coloring E3 to be green. And so identifying such a sequence might not be not local, might not be local. So how to resolve this issue? What we what we did is to uh, is that we developed a cutting procedure that basically removes some of the edges to avoid the classes to go too far away from the too far away from the component from E one and. Uh, yeah, and that's, we do that for every colors. And uh, in the end, you will get a bunch of uh, edges that are removed throughout the algorithm. And then we will recolor these edges using uh, new colors. But we have to ensure that uh, these colors can be colored using a small number of new colors. And how do we do that? Um, so basically what it is, is that um, for each color, we can orient the edges such that our degree of each vertex is at most one. This is doable because uh, for each color, the um, each color induces a forest, right? So we can just uh, orient the edges to, uh, toward the, the root of, the, of each tree, right? So this is doable. And then we keep the orientation when we delete edges. Uh, same for the other colors as well. So in the end, we look at those um, directed edges and uh, they form a directed graph. And uh, let L max be the maximum degree of the left over subgraph. And we know that the diversity of the left over subgraph will be upper bounded by L max, which means that we can recolor these edges using 2.01 L max new colors by Barenboom Elkins algorithm in open graphs. And uh, so now the question left is how we choose the edges to delete to minimize L max. And uh, this translates to some kind of online load balancing problem. 
a natural standard way to solve the problem is to uh, cut each edge, remove each edge with WTP independently. Um, so by doing that, we can ensure that no path of the same color go outside the purple bowl of this polylog and one over some radius. Okay. Uh, however, um, if we we use this strategy, L max will be cut up the log n because there's a limit of the term of bound. So to get below log n excess colors, we have to um, we have to use a different strategy. And uh, so what we use here is the idea from uh, distributed devising color and paper from Super Mifu. Um, so instead of deleting each edge with probability p independently, uh, now we delete uh, those edges whose deletion will not make the L degree to exceed L max with probability p independently. So this way we force the L degree to be upper bounded to be L max. And uh, we can still show that, okay, then um, that there will be no paths that goes to this uh, purple ball to uh, uh, go, go outside of uh, this purple ball. And so we will be able to push our uh, max down to log delta over log, log delta by using this strategy while keeping the radius radius of this purple ball to be something similar, polylog and all over epsilon. And uh, moreover, we can further push L max to be one and uh, that will result in a trade-off on the radius. So we will have to increase the radius to poly delta log and one over epsilon to ensure that there's no path of the same color that goes through the purple bone. And, uh, um, and the analysis is not, uh, not obvious, but if you're interested, uh, please uh, take a look at the, the paper, okay. And here are some open problems. Um, so our result runs in poly delta log and one of some runs for epsilon a greater than or equal to three. And uh, the first open problem is whether we can get rid of this poly delta factor. And uh, the second open problem is that uh, in the edge coloring problem, it has been shown by Bernstein recently, we can get to this optimal number of colors. Can a, similar, can a similar thing be achieved here for forest decomposition? Forest decomposition. Can we get a forest decomposition uh, in this number of rounds? That's the second problem. And the, the third open problem is whether uh, is uh, to consider the forest decomposition problem for the other models, such as dynamic algorithms. And in particular, we hope that uh, uh, maybe our structural result can give some uh, insight uh, for, for the results in, in those models. And uh, uh, that concludes my talk. Thank you.